morning. Glad you're all with us today. It's good to be in church and happy to see each and every one of you. Uh, stick around after church. Help out with our fundraiser. Also, we'll serve some lunch. Get the ladies to do that. Because that's what you're good at, right, Rosa? <laughs> we want to welcome you all. Glad that you're here. We want to welcome each one of you that are watching on YouTube. Um, we invite you to like, subscribe, share, help us get the videos out. It really helps with the channel and helps spread the word of God. And that's what we're here for. So tomorrow is Independence Day. It's the day that we decided as a new nation that we wanted to not be part of England. We were going to secede from them. We wrote our Declaration of Independence. And through the hand of God, a small country by itself, cut off from most of the world at that time, with 13 colonies, was able to fight off the largest military power at that time. And we formed the United States of America. And we celebrate that tomorrow, our independence. And today we're going to talk about our independence and our freedom as Christians and what exactly that means. Because if you ask the world today, they will say, serving God has way too many rules and way too many regulations and way too many things that you can't do. And so you're not free if you're serving God. And today we're going to talk about that. So if you have your Bibles grab them. We're going to be in Romans chapter 6 today. We'll be starting in verse 15. So grab your Bibles, go ahead and turn them there. And before we start, let's pray and ask the teacher to be here. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for allowing us to come before you. I ask, Lord, that as we go through the scripture today, as we go through your word, you open our eyes to the things that you will have us see, that they will sink into our hearts, that you will just use them to bear fruit for us and our lives in your kingdom, Lord. I ask, Lord, that anything that I have prepared, that we have prepared together, that you just use me as the conduit and allow me to just deliver your words, Lord. Anything that is not of you, any thought that pops in my head, Lord, I ask that you just push it aside and that you take over this service. I give you the praise for it, Lord, and ask that you just teach us in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Romans Chapter 6, verse 15, that's where we're going to be today. So if you got your Bibles, turn there. And I'm reading out of, I believe this is the New King James Version. I don't know, look it up, it doesn't matter which version it is. <laughs> uh, but we're going to read chapter uh, 6, starting verse 15 um, to the end of the chapter. What then, shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Certainly not. Do not... Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of, or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thankful that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness." I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanliness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is real freedom. When you, when you were hearing me read it, when you read it and you look at it, there's a lot of words in there like slaves, service. But this is true freedom because on this earth, in this life, we are either going to serve God or we're going to serve Satan. There is no in-between. Jesus said, if you're not for me, you are against me. 
So there's no, well, I'm not worshiping Satan. I'm not serving Satan. I'm just not serving God. There's no in-between. Because Satan doesn't need you to worship him. All he needs you to do is disobey God. And so you're going to be a servant or a slave, as Paul puts it here, to one or the other. And if you are serving the Lord, you are a servant. And if you are not serving the Lord, you are a slave. And there's a difference. There's a difference between slave and there's a difference between servant. We often associate the two as the same, but the dictionary definition tells us there's a difference. A slave has no choice, is considered property. A servant serves and often gets paid, sometimes has room and board and food, as well as monetary wages. There's a difference between being a servant and a slave, and when you serve God, you are part of his family, there is freedom. When you're not serving God, you will be a slave to your sin and to Satan. And one of the greatest motivating factors for people all around the world is freedom. From the beginning of time, the world, people, nations have had the quest for freedom. Armies have fought for it. Nations have voted for it. And we want freedom. Nobody wants to be a slave. Nobody wants to not have the liberty to choose and do what they want. And we have this idea that serving the Lord, hopefully not us, but the world has this idea that serving the Lord is not freedom. And This verse, this section of verses, tells us that no one is totally free. There's no such thing as complete freedom. Even if you take the Bible, the Word of God, out of it, I don't believe in God, I don't believe in the devil, there's still nobody that is totally free because we have rules and laws in this nation and in every nation because if we didn't, then nobody would be free. I'm sure we can all think of the time that we saw a police officer in his car going 100 miles an hour down the highway, sometimes with their lights and sirens on, sometimes not. And we all know that those police officers, when they're not on duty, do the same thing in their cars because they know I have the freedom to do that because if I get pulled over, I'll get out of the ticket. Even though I'm off duty. Because another cop won't write a ticket. And while that may seem like freedom to them, is it freedom to us? Is it freedom to the person that is trying to go down the freeway at a normal speed and this guy zooms around him? We have laws to keep us within a safety zone for each other as well as ourselves, and it is the same thing with the Word of God. While we may not look at some of the rules, as the world may not look at some of the rules that God has for us as freedom, if we look at them as they're set up, they're there for our protection. They're there for our benefit. They're not there to hold us back from having a good time. And You're either going to serve God or serve Satan, as this verse says. And if you look at verse 16 again, do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave for whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? Nobody is totally free, and you can choose sin and death or righteousness, and holiness, and ultimately eternal life. And your master is either going to be Satan and sin, 
or it's going to be Jesus and righteousness. And one of the best lies that Satan has told from the beginning of time, first people in the Bible, is that serving God has its rules and its regulations and he's holding you back. He did it with Adam and Eve and he's doing it to this day. And it's his best lie because he tells us that serving God there's rules and restrictions but with him there isn't any. And while you may think that serving Satan or ignoring God gives you more freedom, it leads to a path of destruction just like drugs. Because whatever you decide to serve, whether it be God or whether it be sin, eventually you fall into a pattern of doing it over and over and over like a drug and wanting to do it more and more to get that next high. And if you give your life to the Lord, if you serve Him, if you feel the love, if you see the blessing, it also becomes something that you're chasing because you want to do it more. Amen. And the difference between the two is the more you serve the Lord, the more you listen to the Lord, the more you obey, the more blessing you get, the more you bless other people, the more you're able to give, the more God gives to you. And on the opposite side, the more you lose, the more you destroy when you serve sin. Just like drugs. You become addicted. And Satan's biggest lie from the beginning is, you have total freedom with me. No rules. God told you not to eat off that tree. I wouldn't tell you to do that. And God puts these rules and these regulations just like a good parent to benefit us and to benefit those around us. And God's rules and regulations, if you think about them, just in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal, don't kill, don't commit adultery. That's just a couple of them. Those don't seem like ridiculous rules and regulations. And going back to the idea of the police officer, if I have complete freedom with no rules and regulations, everybody around me has less freedom. Because I can kill if I want to. I can steal. I can commit adultery. I've got complete freedom. Of course, everybody around me has less. And most laws in this country, not all of them, but most laws in this country are here to benefit the masses, not to hold us back. And if we had complete freedom with no laws and no rules and no regulations, that would be less freedom. And God is the exact same way where he gives us these rules these regulations so that we will benefit and people will benefit around us. And Jesus said they break down into two categories. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. You break them down, that's our rules and regulations we need to follow. And other than that, freedom. Blessings. And God's laws and His rules that He established are not there to make him bigger if we obey them. It doesn't make him any bigger. It doesn't make him any more powerful if he goes, look at everybody obeying me. It's there for us. It benefits us. It blesses us. And it blesses those around us. But on the opposite end, it makes Satan bigger. It makes him more powerful. The more that you ignore God, the more that you disobey, the more that you don't listen to the rules and regulations, and the more that you feel the freedom that Satan has to offer. It makes him bigger. Because he's here for one purpose, to steal, to kill, and to destroy every single one of us. His goal is being accomplished when we disobey God 
and we think, well, I'd rather have the freedom to not have to listen to these Ten Commandments that are so difficult. And if we are blessed by obedience, it's just like a parent who blesses a child when they listen to the parent. For the parents out there, if you say, I want you to clean your room, and your child didn't argue, and went up and cleaned their room, first of all, you all probably have heart attacks. There was no arguing. But if they did that, there would be a blessing that they would receive because of it. Not only a clean room, but you would tell them as parents, thank you, I appreciate it. I can tell you right now, I don't want to compare him to his dog, but Elijah is very, very motivated by a piece of candy. Very motivated, just like the dog is very motivated by a treat. And you can tell just how much he wants that candy based on what you ask him to do for that piece of candy. And if it's too hard for him, he doesn't want the piece of candy. But the blessing that he receives when he does what I ask him to do when I'm watching him, and I say, hey, go do this, and he does it, later he comes up and he says, Uncle Billy, can I have a piece of candy? And it's a whole lot easier for me to go, yeah, you can. And he gets all happy and he says, thank you, and he often says, I love you. And when he doesn't listen to me, he's always going to come up later and go, can I have a piece of candy? And it's really easy for me to go, no, because I asked you to do this. And you can see the disappointment in his face. And we are just like five-year-old children when it comes to God. If he asks us to do something and we do it, there is a blessing. And when we know we're in obedience, listening to his word, listening to his calling, doing what he says, when we need something, it's a whole lot easier for us to go to him and say, I need. I need help with my finances. I need a healing in my life or my family's life. I need peace. Whatever we need, it's a whole lot easier when we know I have been obedient. And real freedom is what Paul's talking about here in Romans. If you want real freedom, you choose life. And right now, we all, every person, has the same freedom. You get to choose. You get to choose, am I going to serve God the Father? Am I going to listen to Him? Am I going to give my life to Him? Am I going to do what He asks when He calls me and asks me to do something? Or, am I going to choose Satan and sin and death and destruction? Every one of us has the choice. But those are the choices. And Jesus said, I'm going to say it again, if you're not for me, you're against me. And we all have the freedom, real freedom, which is the decision to decide on who we're going to serve. Because it's going to be one or the other. It's going to be one or the other. And real freedom is being set free from the slavery of your sin in order to be a servant to righteousness. That's real freedom. Because as I said, sin will destroy you. You become addicted to it. You have no choice. You continue to follow it. And you go deeper down the rabbit hole, if that's what you want to call it. And it's a whole lot harder because of the pride that we have as stupid humans to say, I'm sorry, I want to come back. And our only hope for real freedom is Jesus. That's our only hope for real, true freedom. He is able to free us from the bondage of sin. And after we have freedom from sin, He will enable us through the Holy Spirit to do things there was no way we could do without Him.
no way we could do without him. And that is true freedom. But, because there's always a but, isn't there? But, how often, when we get that true freedom, do we go right back to it, as the Bible says, a dog returning to its vomit? Right back to our bondage, right back to our chains, right back to our jail cell, right back to our sin. How often do we go back? Unfortunately, way more often than we would care to admit. Way more often. And the sad part is, as I'm up here and I, I got ready to do this sermon, and of course, being right before Independence Day, I was like, well, I gotta preach on freedom. And knowing that I was preaching on, hopefully, people that are on YouTube that will turn their life over, that are right now serving sin or not serving God. I know most of us out here that are staring at me are on the side of, well, no, I'm, I'm every once in a while, yeah, I go back. We all do. I go back and I sin. But I know that for the most part, I'm doing what I should be serving the Lord. And praise God for that. I would guess each and every single one of you, even if Jesus was standing up here, would say, no, I, I choose you. I choose you. But, because there's always a but, while we may not be returning to the sin and the bondage and the not serving God and serving the devil, we might not even realize it because we're not sinning. We're not sinning. I'm not going out and committing adultery. I'm not killing. I'm not stealing. Here on Sunday, I'm remembering the Sabbath day. I'm not lying. So I'm not sinning. But I preached it a while back. And I ask you again today, are you obeying? Are you obeying? Because disobedience is sin. And if you are not obeying, then you are being disobedient and you are sinning and going right back to those chains of sin. And when I ask if you're obeying, is God calling you? Is he telling you he wants you to do something? And are you ignoring it? Could be anything. This is between you and God. This has nothing to do with me. I don't know what it is. But most of the time, God is calling and asking us to do something. To give more. To pray for somebody. To call somebody and pray with them. To preach the gospel. He's asked us all to do that. Go out in the world and preach the gospel. To every beast. And if God is asking us to do something, if he is calling us to do something, again, to serve him, and we're not doing it, we are sinning and going right back into those chains of bondage. And I ask you again, is God calling you? Are you ignoring him? Are you not obeying him? Or are you making excuses on why you can't? Amen. Maybe you're not ignoring him outright, but every time you get that little Jiminy Cricket conscience, if you want to call it that, saying, hey, you're supposed to do this, are you giving an excuse like Pinocchio? I'm listening, but I'm going to tell you why I can't. And we do it often, and before you feel too bad about yourself... When I say we, I'm talking about numerous people in this book. Numerous people in this book that made excuses. But every single one of them eventually did what they were supposed to do. And I have 
a visual for this one. Unfortunately, I told my mom I needed to get some crutches, because I know the church has all kinds of extra stuff. And I said, I need some crutches. She said, okay, well, there's some crutches, and there's a walker, and there's a wheelchair. And I said, no, I need crutches. And I said, I'm going to ask my brother to come up here and walk on these crutches, and I'm going to kick the crutch out from under him. And my mom said, okay, so you want me to put him back by his chair? Didn't even question it. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to kick them out, but we can all visualize kicking those crutches out from my poor brother. And you all laughed. I saw you all smiling. He's out there watching the fireworks stand right now. The ears are probably burning because I was talking about Andrew doing it because I figured he'd fall harder than Daniel would. But, you know, you're all laughing. And often we pick up crutches and use them when we don't need them. When the Lord calls us and says, I need you to do this. I want you. I'm calling you to do this. Again, whether it be serve or give. He has a job for each and every one of us in his kingdom. And often he says, I need you to go. And we go, well, we can't because, well, I mean, I got these crutches. And it's just, it's hard for me. And many times... We pick up the crutches that we don't need and we rely on them and we become accustomed to them and then we're not free. These crutches limit my movement. I know, confession good for the soul, I've lost a step or two in my older age. I used to be pretty fast. People still say, you're fast. Watch me play softball. Man, you're fast. I know I used to be faster. I don't care how fast I was, how fast I am now. Even backpedaling, running backwards, I'm still going to move faster than I can with these crutches. Because they hold you back. They limit movement. And we often pick them up and we go back to a bondage of, I'm going to rely on these crutches and then we're being disobedient and returning back to sin like a dog does to its vomit and we're putting ourselves in bondage. And again, before you feel that Pastor Bill's up here talking to me because I don't know what God has told any of you to do, whether again it be give, whether it be serve, I don't know. But you know that he's asked you to do something. And before I, you think I'm talking to you, Moses did it. I can't go. I, I don't speak so good. Basically what he said. I, 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 I stutter. I can't do it. Elijah. I can't go. Jezebel's going to kill me. Peter. I'm going to go fishing. Go back. The Bible is full of people that picked up crutches when God told them to go. And we're no different. And in each one of those stories, each one of those people, guess what happened? They still went. Elijah still did what God told him to do even after he made the excuse. Moses still went after God told him what to do, even after he made the excuse. And I'm here to tell you from personal experience, you're still going to do it, whether you pick up the crutches or not. Because when God calls you to do it, eventually, you're going to be like my brother if I had done it, on your crutch, going down the road, and that crutch is going to be kicked out from underneath you and you're going to fall on your face and while everybody would go, that is the meanest thing to do when you look up, God's going to stand there and go don't use the crutch because you don't need them 
You don't need them. And while we pick them up and we try to use them, God knows that we don't need them and we can continue to pretend like we do and rely on them and eventually fall down with our face in the pavement and look up to see God standing there because I'm telling you it's going to happen or we can choose today to drop the crutches and be, have freedom and serve with what he's telling us to do because you're going to do it on your own or getting up from the pavement just like Moses went even after he made the excuse just like Elijah still went even after he made the excuse just like me who's up here preaching even after I made the excuse and you can make the excuse over and over and over but one day you're gonna look back and go that's all it was was an excuse that's all it was was an excuse and God as mean as it sounds will one day kick that crutch out from under you unless you choose to drop it on your own and I'm sure my brother's happy that I decided not to do that but you all got the visual when I talked about it in your mind and it would be mean for me to do it especially if he needed the crutch it would be very mean of me to do it especially if he needed the crutch and it might be a little less mean if he didn't need the crutch but it would still be mean but if every one of us had a parent that when we first started walking went here's this walker don't ever trip and fall right now the world will be looking at all of us going what is wrong with that person who can't walk because their parents didn't take away their walker and God knows when we need the crutch and when we don't and as I close today I want to say this I've said it before I will say it again numerous times God does not call the able God does not call the able he calls the available and makes them able and whatever he's calling you to do you can make the excuse like Moses I don't talk so good and still go because that's what God told you to do and you're gonna do it anyway or you can go I don't talk so good but the person who made me be able to speak in the first place can make sure I am able and God will never call the able because then the able person will go look what I did he'll call the available because just like Moses and just like Elijah they knew I can't do this without God Elijah knew I can't make fire appear and consume a sacrifice and stones that are soaking wet in the dust but God can Moses knew I don't have the power to part the Red Sea or to cause the plagues but God does and God called the available and made them able and if you make yourself available, if you drop your crutches, he'll make you able. There will be a blessing. You'll be able to look back and you won't have to pick yourself up off the pavement. Because eventually, if you keep those crutches, you're going to have to pick yourself up off the pavement. Said it from this pulpit before. I was one of them. I don't need to go into the story again, but I was one of them with the crutch that got kicked out from under me. Learn from others' mistakes. This is God's letter to us, a love letter that tells us you want to be successful, you want to feel my love, you want to be close to me, you want to be blessed. 
here's what you should and shouldn't do and I've given you example after example after example and if you read it if you listen to it if you stay close to him if you walk with him it's a whole lot easier not to pick up those crutches and we can choose freedom or we can choose to be slaves and be slaves of sin and be slaves of our excuses but if you want to be free if you want true freedom then you need to be a servant of Jesus and obey because that's part of it Amen. obedience is what we do when we serve disobedience is sin and whether we're disobeying on something that's as simple as give a dollar and you're disobedient you might as well have gone out and committed murder because God says if you've done one of them you've done all of them disobedience is sin so we need to make sure when he calls we answer when he tells us to go we go and when he tells us to go quickly to run to do it now that we don't go it's gonna take me a little while because I got these crutches and if you do need the crutches he'll still make you able if you're available let's bow our heads Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for allowing us to come before you. I pray, Lord, that as we go through today and we go through this weekend, that you will just continue to remind us that the only way to truly be free, to have true freedom, is to be serving you. I ask, Lord, that as we meditate on the things we've heard today, you bring them back to our remembrance that when we hear your calling, Lord, that we remember to do it, to do it now, to be obedient, and to not pick up the crutch. Because none of us want to fall. Lord, I ask that as we go from this place, you watch over and protect us. You watch over us this weekend. Lord, we ask once again, please bless our nation. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve your blessing. We don't deserve your grace. We have walked away from you as a nation, Lord. But your word says, if my people who are called by my name, not the nation, my people. And so, Lord, I pray that as your people who are called by your name, humble themselves, pray, turn from our wicked ways, that you'll hear our prayers and you'll heal our land. We ask, Lord, because only you can do it. I ask, Lord, that as we go through this week. You just continue to watch over and guide us. Bring us back next week. And we'll give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before you leave, this was one step in freedom. And next week, God willing, I'll be up here again. And we'll talk about how you can be free even when you are in bondage, in jail, and have true freedom. Thank you all for being here. Thank <laughs> you.